iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone 13 Pro Max, the best camera phones from Apple in 2020 and 2021. This year though, Apple gave the 13 Pro Max all new cameras. So how much better of a camera phone is this phone versus this one? Hi, I'm Michael Josh. You're watching Gadget Match. Today, I'll take you around New York to find out. Before we dive in, I think it's important to quickly talk about hardware. Smartphone manufacturers, Apple included, sometimes don't always upgrade the hardware on their smartphones when they release new phones. Instead, they leverage software updates and new capabilities of the ISP or the image signal processor, which is found in new SoCs, chips like the A15 Bionic or Snapdragon 888. For example, Google's Pixel 3 through 5 all shared the same image sensor, or the jump from the Samsung Galaxy S20 to Galaxy S21. This year is special because all of the iPhone 13 Pro Max's three rear cameras are completely new, which is why this video should be interesting. With improved software and hardware, then photos should be dramatically better, don't you think? Well, let's find out together. Just to recap, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has three cameras. And by the way, this applies to the iPhone 13 Pro as well. They have the same exact camera system. One, a wide camera with the largest sensor on an iPhone to date and an f1.5 aperture and sensor shift OIS. A 120 degree ultra wide camera also with a larger image sensor and an f1.8 aperture. That also doubles as a macro lens. And finally, a telephoto camera with a 77 millimeter focal length and 3x optical zoom. All right, let's do this. Our day starts somewhere in Williamsburg at my favorite bagel spot, Bagel Smith. It's gonna be a long day, so it's important to fuel up like a typical New Yorker would. But our comparison actually starts at Brooklyn Bridge Park. One thing I love about living in Brooklyn is that you can take a walk or a bike ride to the water and kind of see New York or at least Manhattan. And come on, look at that. Doesn't that scream New York to you? Both these photos shot using the ultra wide camera are nearly identical. Both these photos look great, but I mean, how better can you get with conditions like this? Even under a little bit of shade to see how these cameras manage both highlights and shadows, it's hard to tell these photos apart, even as it gets closer to dusk, like in this shot I took of a mural in Chinatown. And really, it's time to stop the hate. But maybe we're looking at it wrong because the improvements to the ultra wide angle camera have to do with a larger image sensor that lets in more light. So let's take a look at some photos taken with the lights down low. I took this shot near the subway exit at City Hall, where it's particularly moody. Night mode kicked in. Notice how grainy the steps in the foreground on the iPhone 12 Pro Max's photo. There's hardly any detail there. Now, even when there's sufficient ambient light, you'll notice a difference. I mean, at first glance, sure, this looks like the same photo, but when you zoom in to the painted street or the walls above the new China beauty salon, you'll see how much fuzzier the 12 Pro Max's photos are. Here's another photo taken somewhere in Brooklyn. First off, it appears that the white balance on the 13 Pro Max is better than on the 12 Pro Max, and you'll find this is consistent across many photos you'll see later in this video. Notice how much brighter this photo is. You can even see some of the blues in the sky. And when you zoom in on the convenience store, the merchandise is also more defined. Apple claims the ultra wide angle camera on the 13 Pro Max lets in more light. So I wanted to see what it might do without night mode. So I took this photo at a dimly lit restaurant in Williamsburg. What do you think? Does the 13 Pro Max have the brighter photo? Did it let in more light? But it's hard to tell, so let's zoom in and look around the room. I can see this guy's expression, the Ainsley sign is clearer, and there's definitely more light on this woman's face. I wasn't content, so I wanted to do one more test. In a completely dark room, my Lego room to be exact, I shot these two photos. There's a concert going on in my Lego Chinatown and everyone has come out for it. And this photo speaks for itself. The 13 Pro Max's ultra wide angle camera does let in more light, making the ultra wide angle camera much more usable even after the lights go out. Now, before I continue, I wanted to talk to you about my new buddy, someone or something that has helped me get through this iPhone coverage 
a great deal. The Narwhal T10, which also happens to be this video's sponsor. It's a robot vacuum cleaner and mop in one. So for example, when I made popcorn the other day and spilled some on the floor, I can trust the Narwhal T10 to clean it up for me. Not only does it have strong suction power, it has side brushes instead of roller brushes, so it doesn't get entangled with hair. And with multiple smart sensors, the robot can avoid hitting my furniture, which at a time like this is all over the place. When it knocks into something, its bumper retracts and the sensors direct it on a different route. With LiDAR navigation, the Narwhal T10 goes over bumps and rugs easily. And when it's done vacuuming my floor, I can then replace the side brushes with these two triangle mops. When I do, and this is my favorite part, the Narwhal T10 automatically changes into mopping mode. On the app, I can set no-go zones so it knows not to mop my rugs, only the floor. Now that mopping part has got to be my favorite feature. It just means that while I'm busy working, my house stays squeaky clean without me having to lift a finger. Now, I remember the other day I was making coffee and accidentally spilled some on the floor. So I had the Narwhal T10 do its business and take care of things for me. When the robot auto detects that the mops are too dirty, it returns to the base station where there is a five liter water tank, which it uses to clean itself. Yep, unlike most other robot vacuums, the base station is not just a charging station, it's a cleaning station too. Once the mops are clean and dry again, it resumes cleaning where it left off. With the Narwhal T10 and a few taps on the Narwhal app, I can keep my apartment clean without lifting a finger. Now let's switch over to the wide angle camera and just to set a baseline, as almost always is the case, the daytime shot with the sun out and blue skies will come out almost identical. So let's make it more challenging. Here's Chai with her back to the sun. As my photography teacher always told me, don't shoot against the light, but hey, it's 2021, the technology is so much better. Let's see what these new iPhones can do. Mind you, this is already a great photo. The iPhone 12 Pro Max was able to evenly keep her face properly lit despite the challenging situation. But now with Smart HDR 4, the iPhone 13 Pro Max makes it look that we brought lights or a reflector to bounce natural light onto her face. Incredible. Next, thought this photo would be cute cause Vespa, but apparently it's a Honda. What do I know? It's very subtle, but great photos. Next, some depth of field tests, i.e. an excuse to get some ice cream. Similar photographs, but the iPhone 13 Pro Max is more color accurate, but let's crop into the top right. That boca is just as yummy as the ice cream was. Here's another example. I've recently gotten to plant, and so I enjoy identifying plants when I see them in the wild, or in this case, cafes. This is an Echeveria Chaviana, or a Mexican hen, but I digress. Both phones did good. Love that creamy depth of field. Ooh yeah. Now for some low light tests. First, some cocktails at a local bar. Sure, the 13 Pro Max's photo is slightly brighter, but it could go either way. Now, let's add a human subject. There, now we can see a difference. Chai's definitely more well lit in the 13 Pro Max's photo. Not sure if this is just software, but can I just say, the room was hella darker than this photo makes it appear to be. A testament to how good this technology has become. Before we move on to our last category, some of you have asked if those annoying light flares that reflect on the lens are still there. Well, the short answer is yes. If you could choose between zoom or ultra wide, which one would you choose? Well, that's been a debate in the tech community for a while now. I have publicly stated that I'm a zoom kind of guy. And I'm Michael Josh from Gadget Match, and I like zoom, zoom, zoom in the boom. And Apple only used to offer wide and 2x telephoto on iPhones. But now if you buy the iPhone 13, you get wide and ultra wide. So if you really want that zoom lens, then you need to get a pro model. And this year you get more optical zoom from 2.5 to 3x. Depending on what you're shooting, that means getting a lot closer if something is nearby. Sometimes a little too close for usual day in the life stuff, like in this example of my Lego Voltron that sits on a shelf above my desk. By the way, sound off below if you grew up watching Voltron cartoons. It also means getting just a little bit closer when filming something much further away, like the Brooklyn Bridge. I'd say the difference doesn't look significant here, but when you crop in, you'll see that the 3X shot has much more detail. And sometimes, 
you want detail. Like in these architectural elements outside a building in Brooklyn Heights. I think they're called mascarons. Not macarons, but note to self, let's get some later, Jai. Let's zoom in on this creature over here. Notice how much softer the 12 Pro Max's photo is. The textures on the 13 Pro Max are more distinct, even this close. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about night mode. During its keynote, Apple said that for the first time, night mode gets zoom. And that can be confusing for iPhone 12 Pro Max users. And for the first time, all of the cameras, including the telephoto, have night mode. Because as you can see here, there is night mode. So I did some research and came across this article that suggests that night mode zoom on the iPhone 12 Pro actually uses the wide camera. So just to illustrate what's going on, this was a photo I shot using night mode zoom on the 12 Pro Max. And now when we swiped up to see the metadata, there, taken using the wide camera, just zoomed in digitally. Now that makes sense because the wide camera on the 12 Pro Max has a large image sensor which lets in more light, so probably that camera performs better than the zoom lens on the 12 Pro Max. But now on the 13 Pro Max, you can really get actual night mode when you zoom in. And the results are massive. Look here, shot this lamp from about 10 feet away. Notice how much more detail is in the iPhone 13 Pro Max's photo. Especially when you zoom in, the glasses are crystal clear and the bulb too, and the definition on those leaves. That's because a 13 Pro Max didn't have to zoom in digitally for the shot. For a low light zoom photo, the shot is pretty good. So do the hardware and software improvements bestowed upon the 13 Pro Max make it a better camera smartphone? As great as the 12 Pro Max's cameras already are, the 13 Pro Max is even better. These bigger image sensors mean you can take great photos no matter how challenging the lighting situation, especially when there's not a lot of it or if you find yourself having to contend with the light, it makes up for that too. I particularly love improvements to the ultra wide angle camera, the fact that it has autofocus now, and that it doubles as a macro camera. This makes it more flexible, not just for photos, but for video. I like that we get more zoom, not a crazy amount, but good enough for day-to-day -day needs. And that 77 millimeter focal length is closer to what I prefer to shoot portraits in. To be honest, I can't wait to go back out there and shoot more photos with the 13 Pro Max to show you what it really can do. But by the time this video rolls out, the iPhone 13 will already be on sale and you can go out and test it out yourself. Let me know if that's what you plan on doing. We have a lot more iPhone 13 series content coming your way. So make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. We have a comparison video versus the S21 Ultra coming next. As always, follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. I also post photos on there as I go about my day and testing these phones and make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.